Okay, so clean import. Oh, I don't have anything on the bottom of my screen. That's okay. You guys know who I am, where I'm streaming, where I'm recording to. And uh, let me know if my audio is okay now that I've done a clean install of OBS. The only thing I could think of was I downloaded Streamlabs and then installed it and copied some preferences over. That was the only thing I'd done weird around OBS <laughs> before uh, last time's live stream, my Herman Munster live stream. So anyway, uh, let's get started here. So today is going to be all creature day, except for we need to announce some winners. We're going to go through here, and if I see anything, uh, I mean, there's a couple things that I saw that I probably need to, I don't have to demo, but we'll go ahead and demo because it's fun. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Twitter here. And the good news is this will be fast because we only had four submissions and this would be the contest you'd want to submit to because out of four, I have to pick two of them to win. And actually even better, because they're all awesome and there's only four of them, everybody's a winner uh, in my heart, both, both uh, literally and figuratively because, um, let me go ahead and, sorry, I need to get my pages open here. <clears throat> Uh, all four winners, anything you guys want off my gum road, and it can be everything, it can be nothing, or my cube brush page, just let me know, or don't let me know, I'll, I'll DM you. Uh, so the two winners, I'll DM you the uh, painter codes and get you guys set up, and then all four of you can have anything right now, currently, and future on my gum road, because you're all awesome. And also, I have updating... Uh, we're going to have, here's the ZBrush 2020, what's new files, so 40 files here, uh, going on uh, just over three hours worth of stuff, so I'm going to be updating my, what's that one called, ZBrush for concept and iteration, I'll be updating that, and then also I'll be putting these on YouTube, uh, as soon as I get some thumbnails and some descriptions uh, finished, and then we'll do my intro video for that, and then we'll go ahead and post it. So let's take a quick look through here, because like I said, there's some really good submissions, and there's some stuff I want to talk about as far as, there it is, uh, maybe some technique and stuff uh, that we could do in substance. And then we'll get to the creature stuff. Um, so we had this war machine turned to a, into a peaceful totem. And let me see if I can kind of zoom in on some of these things. So <laughs> I got I replied here, the, uh, the walnut inlay, it kind of has a little mother of pearl uh, subsurface scattering and stuff. Very, very, and it got some wires back here. Uh, very cool. And on the GIF, uh, this these uh, lights animate on. So very, 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 very neat. I like that one a lot. I liked all these. These are really good. And that was uh, Daniel. My wife liked this one too. So you're a winner. And then uh, this one, I think this one was my personal favorite. This one is really, really cool. Um, and you got to get you got to get way up in on it. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. A lot of really, really nice intricate work. All uh, all this has subsurface scattering on it. Very, very nice gold inlay. Now, what I like about these two is that, oh, look at these teeth. These teeth are awesome. And yeah, just like little filigree all over this. Uh, and very, very cool laser eyes on there. This came out really clean. It almost looks like, you know what? Another thing you could possibly do is you could subdivide this. Um, and oops, let me make sure I'm... There we go. Uh, you could subdivide this, and as long as when you're in Maya here, let me see if I remember these settings. So we're going to have this open, and we have one panel over here that we're going to dedicate to the UV editor. And we'll go ahead and, uh, you know what, one thing we don't need to do is hit F to frame. Uh, so we have our UVs here. We can go into View Grid, and we can go ahead. We don't need to see the tile labels there. Now, when I go through here and we go to like a mesh smooth, let's go into the options here. I think you want to preserve edges and corners. And then when you apply, let me make sure I did it correctly. Cause you don't want, well, that's the thing. If you don't want your UVs to move at all, you can go through here and you can say uh, UV smoothing none. And then it'll just go through here and it'll just add a subdivision based on your geometry. Uh, but if you haven't done any texturing yet, although if you've baked maps, yeah, if you've baked maps, I guess your normal map's going to be along that boundary. So in that case, you would say UV boundary smoothing none. And you could go ahead and smooth uh, your geometry. 
but not your UV so that the normal maps fall in the right place. So you could get a smoother result, I suppose, and they could bake to that, uh, especially if you're not worried about optimization for game rest stuff. Undo that there. Uh, so back here into Painter. Remove this back up, sorry. Um, so that's one thing you could do. And then, uh, so yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite one. And then the second one my wife picked was this one. So it's got the uh, stickers on it. It's got the paint all over it. And uh, this is, what did he say it was? This one was by uh, Nicholas Hunter and this was by uh, Patrick K. And a uh, kid was uh, made by some evil engineer, left for five minutes and his kid got nearby with stickers. And uh, she liked that one a lot. And then the Ape Inter this Ape Inter challenge was like a steampunk damaged one. And so we went over the how to um, throw this up up in the sketch fab. And maybe we can, I guess we could do that again today. Uh, that was, okay, that was another one thing too. So we can go ahead and, can I do this full size? Okay, good. So you can probably see that. Oh good, it's perfect on my screen. Um, and this was cool because, you know, the whole side is damaged and because we, hey, this is the flattened UV version. Um, yeah, you can do an entire two-face thing uh, on here. And then when you're in Sketchfab, if you hold down, let me see if I remember my, yeah, uh, Alt and left click, you can go through here and you can rotate the lights. And if you ever want to inspect the model, you can go through here and you can say Model Inspector, and then you can say, um, you can turn off post, you can turn post on, you can do final render, you can just look at the base colors. Uh, very nice clean base colors actually, based on the, I mean I know I know some of the maps I gave you weren't full resolution but that turned out great. And then uh, matte cap surface, you can check out the wireframe and all that good stuff. So, and your UVs. So very very cool, very cool stuff everybody. So like I said I'll DM the uh, two winners and now let's say the ones my wife picked out. So this first one and this third one here, but then everybody, all four of you, can have whatever you want off my Gumroad and Cube Brush, and also in the future, if I ever release anything, uh, which I will. I've got some stuff on the backlog here. Uh, you guys can you guys can have that as my thank you for um, <laughs> as my thank you for uh, as as on my corporate shill, and I get the feeling that. Um, Everybody's not the biggest fan of that. Let me see if I can get a spot on my head that's transparent. Um, but you know, it's that kind of stuff where it's like, okay, they, uh, I get something free and there's no real point in me using it so I can, I can do a contest for that. And I kind of wanted to do something like this because I thought it would be a little bit funner. But here's the thing too. If you want to go ahead and texture something, uh, you can go ahead. I'll put it in the description of this video as well. You can download this and just kind of play around with it. It's kind of a, just a fun little sample file. Um, so you can tweet those at me as well because I just like seeing them. I think they're cool. Uh, and if you go over here to open samples, and you can discard and you can open up a bunch of samples in there too. But um, you can actually drop this in your sample files folder if you want to just use this as one of your samples too. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about... Let's go in here too. There was a quite just really quickly before we get into the creature stuff. There's a question on my YouTube channel about setting a pivot in Maya. So a couple different ways to set pivots in Maya. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the side view here, and we're going to hit four, and I'm going to hit D, and I can go ahead and move this back. I'm just going to put this uh, kind of in that area so we can go ahead and rotate. I'm going to hit D again. Now if I click off and click back on, it should stay. Now if if it was like if you're in D mode, I guess, and then you clicked off and clicked back on, no, it'll still stay. Um, also when you're in, you call it D mode, um, if you go into here to any object here, so let's say we have this object here, and let's go ahead and hit control one so we can isolate it, and I hit uh, w and then D, so I can go ahead and um, stick it on here, and, the, and it's you know way down there, kind of tilted at an angle. Uh, you can hit, hold down V, and it'll snap, um, and you can align it to any point in here. And what else can you do? You can also go in here if you double-click Move. You can go in here to Edit Pivot, and that's the um, mode that you're on. And we go down here to Custom. So if we hit D and we're just in object mode and I go, you know what, um, here I'm in object, I'm in world, and then I want to go to custom, edit pivot, and you can just 
align it right to that face as well. So you can just do a component selection and align it to that face. And that's just that D hotkey will put you in edit pivot, edit, edit pivot mode. And then you can hit D, and then now you can move right along that uh, normal pivot. I like ZBrushes where you can just hold down Alt and tap surfaces and you're good to go. Uh, it's a little bit of a clunkier way, but of course you can you can do it faster than I just did it. Um, so there's that. So that should that should stick. Uh, I'm not sure what was happening in the in the question I got, but anyway. So we have this pivot here. Well, let's see if it. And it is off skew to the side, and I can go and reset that. But when we're on the on the side here, if I go back to world orientation, uh, it'll go ahead and move the pivot. But I can use this camera based orientation, so we can go ahead and um, we can like open this up a little bit. So let me go ahead and grab my tablet here. And then for the rest of these two, we can go through and we can uh, rotate these down. And now this is the type of thing where, oh man, oh, I could I could rotate this much, much faster and move these things around much faster in uh, Maya than I can, or in ZBrush than I can in Maya. Uh, because if I'm gonna do this, you know, I gotta set these pivots and I have to set it uh, to this normal angle and then move it back. So it'd be something like, um, let me hit D and then V and then middle mouse drag here, and then I'd also want to go to um, like align it here, and then V. There we go. So now I can hit I can go out of D mode, Control One, and then I can hit E, and then this one, if I start scaling, um, it's going to start doing that. So you'd want to go in here to your move, and you would want to. I go over here to scale, and we're going to go to um, symmetry settings, and go ahead and put this on. Uh, I guess we can say world X. So just like, or do we have to be in component mode for that? Or is it even going to let me? Let me see vertex. Oh, here's another thing we need to do. Um, preserve UV is turned off. That's what the problem was. So world X here, and the pivot custom symmetry settings to world X. And then, and then you also have to be in component mode. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight with that. So you can move these things around. And then if you are going to take these, once, once you've moved them around, take them into uh, we can go in here to file, and you don't. Uh, I guess you could do select all in here, but I'm. Like, I just want to. I don't want to make sure I export any camera. So we're going to go to file, export selection, and we're going to say uh, ZBrush 20 AMD. Documents. Oh uh, yeah, we need to go to even enter files here. Call this mouth open. FBX export, and then when we go into Substance Painter, uh, even if we're in here painting and we've got this entire thing, let me do a. And then we'll go down here, say, instantiate across, and we'll put it onto my skull here. So we've been doing some texturing. We've got, even if we have some brush strokes on here, if I go through here and we put on a fill layer, add a black mask. Oh, I'm gonna be in the skull here, sorry. Fill layer, add a black mask. And then we can paint on the skull. And so any of my brush strokes that I've applied, even on my jaw, well, maybe maybe not the jaw. Let's see how this works. And then go into Edit, Project Config, Select, Mouth Open, OK. And that'll go through and update my file. Cool. So that'll, uh, let me go here to, So I gotta check something real quick. Yeah, we're 
good shape. Okay, um, that was that, and that was the painter stuff. So again, congratulations to all the winners. And if you do want to, uh, you know, tweet at me your results, I would love to see them. Like I said, really, really cool stuff. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, ZBrush because we're going to talk about uh, what happened yesterday. Uh, the ZBrush ZBrush Guides Creature Pack Creature Pack. Uh, was released. You can get this. This is twenty dollars, and it all uh, the proceeds go to the firefighters in Australia. So I put a, I put a couple little uh, creature stuff in here. So we're gonna do we'll do two demos here. We'll go ahead. You know what we can do? Let's do this. Let me go to my. I'll go back to my Twitter here. Uh, profile. So I posted this one here and we kind of made this little weird creature. So I'm going to kind of make something similar to this and we'll talk about rendering and texturing and we'll have a little bit of fun with that. So I can go through here and we can go, uh, okay, there's two things. So I have the brushes loaded. So if you download the brush pack, probably you want to go ahead and start by going in here to ZBrush 2020, uh, ZBrushes. And I have a creature folder in here, and you're going to see I have uh, these CFA uh, creature packs. These are the ones that come with the creature pack, and I don't want to, eh, I'm not going to say it. Um, there was some, the, the, I don't know, these, these might be updated uh, over time, you know, as, as more people submit and stuff like that. That was uh, some conversation to be had, but I can't hold them to that. So you could just go through here, and you'll have the arms, heads, legs, miscellaneous, and torso. Um, the ones I... Uh, uh, submitted. I have them broken out by creature, and some of the creatures are very similar, so that might be something to consider is uh, when you get these, there might be a little bit of organization you may want to do. For example, well, here's the other thing too. While I'm in my brushes and I go to Pixel Egg ZBrush 2020's creature, uh, if you put them in here, you'll have access to them. If we go through here and we say edit, and we can hit the comma key, and then you can always go to your brush, and then underneath my creature folder that I made, you can just make a folder in there. Hey, okay, Chang. Thanks for showing up. Um, you'll you'll have uh, all this stuff in your creature folder, and you have a, have that available to you. If if you're always constantly doing creatures, or you're using a bunch of other brushes, uh, and you want them to show them up, show up every time you start up. And for in my case, like move stronger, move accu. These are things like move accu. I have a hotkey assigned to that, Alt V, because I move, use it all the time. Um, so that's make a brush save it in uh, this appropriate folder and then you'll always have access to it and you can uh, assign hotkeys to it. And so that would be if you go through here and instead of putting it into ZBrush 2020 ZBrush Creature, you can go to uh, Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2020 Z Startup, Brush Presets, and then when you put them in here and then you restart ZBrush, uh, these will be loaded every time you open up ZBrush. And if you go into ZBrush 2020 Z Data, brush presets. These are the ones that load with ZBrush automatically. So if you want to ever want to change any brushes um, with these here, if you hit B, if you want to like delete some out of there or you want to change any settings like turn on back face masking for some of these, uh, this is where you can do it. I would do this. I would go ZBrush data brush presets and I would go control C, control V, just so you have a brush presets copy somewhere. It's not going to pay attention to that. In fact, if you want to, you can just say, let's call this backup so that uh, if you do accidentally do something weird with a nice default brush, you always have, uh, you can always go back and copy those back in so you're back to your defaults. Because I've actually done that before. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Got some creature work. And okay, so now let's talk about organization. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna go into my brush pack and we're gonna go into brush, brush creature pack arms. So we're going to look at these arms here and we're going to hit M and you're going to say, okay, we got a bunch of different arms. However, um, some of the arms are like super bizarre. Like <laughs> the ones I made are, are pretty weird. And uh, and then sometimes you got some reptile, reptile stuff. And uh, actually the heads might be a better example. So go in here and we do heads. Um, you're going to see, oops. Uh, I like to hit M just because I can see them all. Uh, you can also go up here and you can just kind of browse uh, through these heads here. So uh, you're going to see, you know, so there's some reptile ones and some humanoid ones and some uh, alien type ones and stuff like that. So, and some furry ones. So what I, what I tend to do is I'll, if I'll make a creature, I'll go through and I'll divide up the creature parts and I'll save it as a creature brush. So what I would do is, for example, I would go through here and instead of doing making an arms folder necessarily, I would go into like the ham spider. So I made a ham spider, and then I divided it up. Or, though I think the one I used was the 
inverted scorpion. Reverse scorpion, sorry. So I made a really bizarre creature, and I called it the reverse scorpion, and then I had, I just popped all these pieces off of it and decimated it down. Um, and then as you're creating new creatures with all this stuff, you can always finish it up, and then you can go through and grab pieces off that, break it down, throw it into your brushes folder, and then you can keep stacking these things until you have a massive creature brush folder library. Uh, so we'll go ahead and stick with this one for now. And the only reason I'm going to do that is because I know where these are and I know what I'm going to make, but we'll make a bunch of creatures today. We're, we're aiming at like 10 minutes per creature, uh, just going in there and having fun. So we've got my brush loaded and it's got all these little pieces in it and it's all... The cool thing is having it this way where you just have a bunch of different types of arms and heads and stuff is that's going to make it... You're probably more inclined to have more happy accidents um, and then maybe a little bit more control if you have these broken apart. Uh, by type. Now you can just still do that as well. If you want to go through here in your brushes, um, even the ones that you download, so again, comma key, brush, and let's say we want to go through the torsos here. You got a bunch of torsos in here, and it's like, you know what, I want to pop some of these out, or I want to get rid of some of these, or I want to add some. Um, an easy way to do that, you can always append something. So if I go in here and I say, uh, hit B, create insert mesh, append, now whatever is on my desktop, or on my, what's this called, viewport here, document, uh, it'll go ahead and show up. And of course, you'd probably want to name it. So you go in here and you hit rename and you say, oops. And then uh, when you go in here and you say B, create insert mesh, append, it'll go ahead and throw it in there. Uh, if you want to clean any of these out, you can go through here and you can say uh, brush modifiers, no, create. And then we can go through here and you can say delete the mesh, delete it. You can also copy and you can paste in here. But if you want total control, uh, even how you like you're orienting these as you drag them out, because like if I if I go through here and I say okay, brush, create insert mesh, append, and then I switch my camera view and I go to brush, create create insert mesh, append. It's the same sub tool, but it's appended uh, two different ways. So if I go grab a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D in edit mode, and we have this one. This one drags on straight. This one drags on um, straight, but uh, to, uh, on the side. So go here to brush, we'll say delete and delete. Now you could also, if you drag this one on straight and you want to go to up here to your picker, um, you might be able to kind of change that orientation as well. So you can see um, by default, it's straight at you. So you can just kind of drag that out, uh, but you can also click on this little arrow and you can point this whatever direction you want and it'll go ahead and always stay that even if you're on a weird surface normal, it'll always stay in that direction. So something you could also consider, uh, but we'll go ahead and leave that on once orientation. So we have that. Oh yeah. So reorganizing this stuff, what you can do is you can go over here to Z plugin and go over here to something you need to download which is the IMM extractor brush. So if we go over here and we say ZBrush plugins. And you just say, click it. And you just scroll down. All these ones at the top should be added by default. However, once you get down past this section here, these are um, just cool little plugins. I think most of these are Joseph Drust. And you can go through and download these. And that's why the C plugin file's a little bit longer. If you want to see how to import, uh, put those in there, uh, go to my YouTube channel and just do um, install plugin. And you can you can find that out. But you can go here to the IMM extractor. So now if I do IMM, extra IMM brush to subtools, it'll go through here and extract all of them to a tool with a bunch of different subtools. They're all already oriented. Um, probably Z forward, if I had to guess, that's usually pretty standard. And then they're all, uh, it looks like they're all unified as well. So now you can go through here and you can say, oh, here's all the things. So if you wanted to delete any, or you wanted to go ahead and add anything, you can have total control. So you can go through here instead of appending, well, you're gonna append, but instead of appending it as a brush by going in here to brush, create, insert, mesh, append, you're gonna go down here and you can just append a subtool. So you can take a helix right here and it's gonna automatically make it a poly mesh 3D. If you go into solo mode, it's gonna go, okay, I'm gonna put a helix on here and I want it to be oriented this way. And we're gonna go ahead and rename this helix stuff. Now, here's the thing. If you want to have this 
as a sub tool or as a tool that you want to keep adding to and organizing and stuff and creating insert mesh brushes from. Um, if you go through here and you do save as, it's going to blow away that first name. So what I like to do is put a null in here. I'm going to go to insert, uh, just grab a poly mesh 3D, shoot it to the top, and we'll go ahead and then now we can do save as. And we'll go ahead and just, like I say, this on my desktop as name is something that makes sense. That'll inherit that name, and then I can just turn it off. And so now when I have all these showing, I can go in here to B, create insert multi mesh. It's going to grab them all from that view, and now you've got Helix stuff at the very end. And then you can go in here, I uh, can go to brush, save as. If you hold down Alt, it'll select uh, the selected subtool. If you ever want to get fancier than that, once you can do, let's see if we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and clone. No, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy this and go to Simple Brush. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that tool. So I have two working versions of this. Because what I'm going to do on, you know what, I probably could have just done. No, I didn't want to do that. OK, so uh, with this one, I'm going to go into Transform. We're going to go into here to Expose. And we'll do X, yeah, X and Y. So we can kind of expose these out so you can kind of see them. There we go. Neat. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here to Merge Visible. Boom. So now when I go in here with this brush selected, Brush, Select Icon, Alt, there's all the little pieces sitting out there. Of course, you don't have to do it like this, but feel free. And then you go to Save As, and then you would save this brush as uh, ZBrush 2020, ZBrushes, Creature Brush, and then just go ahead and save it in here and then you have access to it. Or you can save over if you were like, hey, you know what, I updated this one, just save over it. And then um, it'll be good to go. So just a different way to kind of organize your files. And all of these ones, uh, these are all, these would probably be um, usable together. I don't see any reason why not. Uh, but if you got into stuff where it's like, you know what, I'm doing a lot of, I don't know, even if you're doing fuzzy stuff, if you're not sculpting in the fuzzy stuff, if you're just doing like a baseline body and then putting fiber mesh on top of that, probably you would be fine just throwing it into uh, creature stuff. But you're going to see, I, you know, there's a lot of, I put a, a lot of bizarre things in here. Um, like um, ham spider torso udders. <laughs> if this isn't your thing and you're like, hey man, I like creature work, but I need mine a little bit more grounded, you can delete mine out of there. You don't need to see that stuff. Uh, or you can put it in its own, uh, you can call it uh, weirdo have my bizarre fun time. So now let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and restart ZBrush real quick. And we'll get cracking on doing some cool stuff. All right, so how am I going to start this? So we can go through here, and we can just drag a poly mesh out on your canvas. You can start with, um, I'm trying to think of a good way to start. Oh, you can start with Zizu if you wanted to. If you if you had a good idea of, if you go into project here, and you got Zizu, you can go through here, and you can load up any of these. And you, these these would be like a good base mesh to start with, uh, even if you're not going to do any manipulation. I have um, maybe we can start with like tarantula spider here. New. No. I'll go ahead and turn off perspective, turn off floor. So we have this one, and this this is going to be just like any other um, Z spheres. Now these Z spheres, we go down to adaptive skin. You're going to see uh, uses classic skinning, insert local mesh, insert connector mesh, uh, which is why it looks a little bit different. Uh, but you can go through here, you can hold down Alt, and you can delete any of these things, or you can keep those added. Um, so if you want to, like, say, get rid of some of these, and then you want to change the head, or you want to maybe do a little, uh, like we're going to do, we're going to do, like, a um, hit Q, so we can go into draw mode, and then you can just keep adding these little connector pieces, you can move these things around. And then if you use move, you can move the individual joints as far as you want, or if you put them on these connectors, you can, like, move these things around. Ew. Um, and then again, Q to draw. If you draw right along the top here, you can go through and you can start changing this up. So you can do really cool stuff like this. And then once you're good, you can go over here to Adaptive Skin and you're going to see we have a preview. Uh, by default, it's going to be set to Density of 2, Dynamesh Resolution of 256. So it's just going to Dynamesh everything together. Um, I like to work a little bit more piecemeal. So we're going to go out of Preview Mode. We're going to say Density of 1, Dynamesh Resolution of 0. And then the will just get a nice clean version of this to work on. And then we'll say make adaptive skin. That's going to put, here's your Z sphere that we self selected and our adaptive skin is right up here. Uh, select symmetry turned on. So if I want to take these legs out, I can go ahead and just control shift, uh, click all through these. Probably a little faster if you hold down control shift, select lasso, 
just grab little pieces of everything, control shift A, which is visibility, spool, uh, uh, grow all, and then we can go through here and we can say split hidden, and then just do the exact same thing. So here, control shift A, split hidden, here, control shift A, split hidden, and um, it's a little bit easier. And go ahead and grab these. And if you ever miss one, like, oh, I need to grab this one, just invert that selection and just control shift tap. Of course, if you control shift tap with the, uh, the lasso brush, it's gonna wanna take these edge rings. In that case, you can just go through here and hold down alt, or you can just try to click right on one of those verts. And you should be good to go. Split it. So now you can start with your base mesh and any of these things you can go through, like it's this one's like, okay, yeah, this one's fine. I don't need to rotate anything around, but you can. You can hold down control and tap and you can do camera base rotation from the side or you can reset it uh, from the front. Um, so for example, if you wanted to go through here and um, you know, you can reset this and push it back here and rotate it and then whatever you want to do or while that's masked out, you can go through here. Oh, another thing. Uh, if you go over here to auto masking and you say, okay, let's mask by polygroups. Now, whatever that first polygroup you select uh, will be touched and you can also go to topological to kind of do the same thing in this case because these things aren't vert welded. So have fun with that. Hey, Gree Heaven. Uh, thanks for showing up. Just getting rocking and rolling with some creature stuff. And if you're just joining us, oh, let me go ahead and post the link. So this is what we're doing here. Um, let me see. Oh, it might not be on here. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. Uh, this one here. Give it a second. Creature back. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and. And again, this is. Uh, uh, creature back to support the CFA County Country Fire Authority in Australia County would be a little bit smaller than that and uh, to fight the bushfires. So all profits from this pack will end, uh, will be donated to CFA at the end of January 2020. And I think this is, yeah, you only got 16 days left to get it. So it's for a good cause. And uh, you can you can do some fun, cool stuff with that, which we're going to demonstrate as we speak. So you can start with a base mesh. And like I said before, if you want to just go through and you can be like, you know what, let's go ahead and Dynamesh this result. And then just start going crazy with like your move brush and stuff. Now, if you're going to be moving your brush around uh, and control dragging to re dynamesh, I'm going to actually stay a little bit lower than that. Uh, you can go through here with your clay brush or your clay buildup. And uh, we still have mass by polygroups on, so you're going to see it's going to stop working at the borders of those polygroups. Um, you can also do uh, polish by features. That's under your deformation menu. And a feature is a polygroup here. So you can actually go through here and you can smooth those out. And then you get, you can actually use this as a basis. Let's switch back over to select rec. Um, it's a basis for like armor in here. So if you wanted to like um, go down here and do a geometry edge loop panel loops, you go through here and you can start popping off some panel loops here. And you can also go through here and like, um, I don't know, slice through here and do cool stuff or and then do a mirror, mirror and weld across the x-axis and then we can go through and say, you know what, I want these to be together. Bop, bing, boom. Oops, did kind of a nasty job there. Go ahead and leave that. And we can also put these all in one object. So now these features here, um, we don't have any creasing on this, so it's just going to be where we have poly groups. So now when we do a um, polish by features, I'm doing open circle, so it really polishes them down. Um, so now we have this nice cool piece here. So you can actually be like, you know what? I like this. So I'm gonna go over here to Subtool and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this off. I was gonna pop these off as panels. So we're gonna go ahead and say split hidden. And then uh, actually I don't even need this extra head here, sorry. That was dumb. Uh, now we can have X symmetry turned on and then even if I can go ahead and like, oh, I can make thickness and stuff, but this kind of shape is a lot easier to work with if you just do a depth size down to zero, half, zero mesh, and you get much cleaner geometry. In fact, I can keep doing that. And then now I can go through here and I can say Q mesh, polygroup ball, just hover over a face and just kind of Q mesh some stuff off. And for everybody on the YouTube channel who's gonna be like, hey, you're talking too fast. I don't know what you're doing. Um, it's because I'm bored doing this. This is all basic stuff. So if you want to go and learn about that basic stuff, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, new intro to ZBrush, ZBrush Radiation, full playlist. Um, this will walk you through even specifically, um, most of the stuff I'm going to be doing today is really basic. So you can just go to that. 
and check it out. And you can hit D for dynamic, and you can go through here, and you can like, if you wanted to like crease your polygroups, crease PG, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, smooth subdiv of three, three. <laughs> um, you can get that kind of result. So very, very nice, easy uh, kind of panels pulled off of here. And then of course you can go back here and you can start sculpting. Now, if you are going to be pulling out, speaking of creature-y type stuff, you're going to be pulling out like horns, like, okay, let's go to brush, snake hook, BSH. Uh, you're going to get that result if you have Dynamus turned on. So go up here and turn on, oops, um, you can't have mask by polygroups at zero, you can't have topological, you can't have anything fancy in your masking, but you can turn all that off and then you can go through here and you can use um, Snake hook, and then if you hold down sh with the Sculptor's Pro turn on, if you hold down uh, shift and start smoothing and let go of shift, you can actually inflate, which is kind of useful, or you can just go through here and you can just smooth out through here. Uh, and at this point, you can go back into your brush set and say brush, creature, um, miscellaneous, and then hit M and you can grab like a pair of antlers on here. Move these back. Now, generally what I like to do is go through here and uh, like like bony protrusions and stuff, I would probably want to have this as something separate. So I would go through here and I'd do a quick on your subtool split menu. Um, split on mass points is going to throw it underneath. So here it is underneath. And now I can, you know, kind of sculpt around that. And if you have Sculptors Pro, you can put more detail on here based on your brush size. So if you go through here and you're like, you know what, I want to really kind of put a detailed uh, face on here, you definitely can. I tend to, especially on creature stuff, I like to work as like a sketch resolution and then refine after I get my forms kind of locked in. That's up to you. However, um, if you want to go through here and like maybe add some arms on here, so let's go into our brush here, and oops, we don't have them loaded. Creature arms, and M, and let's say, uh, I guess we'll grab any one of these, doesn't really matter. Now, if you drag it from over here and it's like, ah, they're backwards, just go to the other side. And that'll drag them. That's something you can kind of feel out. Now, and then you want these to be uh, kind of stuck in here. You can go control drag, control drag again. Um, and of course, you're going to want to watch your resolution because you see I, I lost a lot of that. So what you could do in this case, uh, not to confuse everybody, but we can go through here, we can split hidden. We can temporarily, if we want to just start going crazy on these, we can crank up that red Dynamesh resolution on just these arms and work on them separately from my body until my body is at the same resolution. And then it's like, okay, I'm working on my body. Let's go ahead and turn on Sculptors Pro. Like, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and crank my laser radius up and tap L to turn off laser radius. And then um, go in here with my clay brush. <laughs> okay, this may be the best creature I've ever made in my life already I can tell we're getting there so now as we're going through and we got our Damien Center brush we can go through and we can kind of um, pull these out here and then uh, we can kind of make that lip look like it's uh, coming in here and then we can go through with our clay brush and again we can kind of build up and put a little filter them on here no nose I'm not feeling a nose right now I'm also going to go in here to smooth stronger And anything I do where it's like, <clears throat> smooth stronger, what is that? Just go to my YouTube channel and Google smooth stronger. And you will have, I, I use that stuff all the time. So I just I just get the feeling that people must be bored watching me explain what move accu is um, 50 times. Same thing with smooth stronger and loading and custom brushes, stuff like that. So now we've got this resolution at 1256. We've got this resolution at 1464. And let's make this a little bit. Okay, now, okay, these are perfectly uh, on here, and in fact, you can even go in here to standard brush, we can clone this off, and we say, you know what, give me a spray stroke, and give me an alpha, and we go through here, and it's like, oh man, we're getting like poor detail on this thing, gross. And then, now that these are similar resolutions, and I'm not gonna lose anything on those arms, now I can fill, um, I can merge these together and then dynamesh them together and then zero mesh and project my details. So I can hold down shift. Uh, just to know, if, like if these things are way different, I'm holding that alt and tapping. It's like, I don't know where these are in my objects or in my stack here. Hold down shift, bent up arrow, alt tap, shift, bent up arrow. They're right next to each other. Merge down, I have a hotkey for that. It's under merge down here, control drag. And now that you've dynamesh these together, you've maintained resolution on both of these. You can go through and you can like integrate 
uh, these two pieces together, and then like I said, you can see remesh uh, that result. <laughs> but, um, hey, side effects, thanks for showing up. Uh, cool. Um, since you're pretty fast, maybe you'd be interested in the option open close duration or preferences interface palettes. I'm close the correct controls the speed at which palettes open close. Not amazing, but I thought we'd like it. Oh, that's a good point. So let's check that out. So under preferences interface way up here and then there's open and close duration uh, we'll control how quickly the UI palettes and sub palettes will open and close so let's drop that down and then uh, I assume now if anything you change in here probably to play it safe you want to go in here to config store config however uh, one thing I like to do if I want everything kind of vanilla I'll go through here sub I don't mind having open but like geometry and edge loop and all this stuff I don't want to have open so I'll go ahead and go through and close everything first and then I'll go in here to preferences, um, sort config. So now, as we go through here, these menus, interface palettes. Oh, these palettes here. Maybe if I go in here and I like brush. Oh yeah, much faster. It's got to move at the speed of PAV. I like it. Thank you very much. That works. Okay, so let's let's get serious. And by serious, I mean. Not serious at all, but we'll make some creatures. So I don't want to start. Start with Polymesh 3D. X symmetry. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to my brush. And I'm going to go to my creature brush. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to grab that reverse scorpion. And we're going to go through here. And I'm going to hit M. And we're just going to, I guess starting with the torso kind of makes sense. Um, so we're going to go through here. And we'll start with a little belly. And we're going to kind of scale this out. Now, if I start at this scale... Um, I like to kind of work at ZBrush's scale, so I'm going to use this as my bounding box. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick um, say split unmasked points. It's going to shoot it below, and now I already have a null sitting here to catch my name, so I'm going here to save as, and we'll just go ahead and throw this into um, streaming speed creatures, and we'll call this speed creature 01, and then that inherits speed creature 01, and it just kind of sits there. I can make this not quite as intrusive. I'll go ahead and scale this down. And I can also use this as kind of a scale. If you are working at a very specific scale, if we go in here to like say um, Z plugin scale master, you can say, uh, okay, what, what scale do you want this to be at? Uh, so we're going to set the scene scale and we'll go ahead and work in um, for our, since I'm live streaming early, let's, let's be friendly to everyone outside of the United States. <laughs> we'll say we're working in millimeters. Um, and right now, the in, this whole thing is only 0.3 millimeters tall, not very big at all. So we're going to have to make that a little bit bigger. So we say, okay, we're working on millimeter scale. And then in the Y direction of this, we're going to say, you know what? Um, we want this to be, oh boy, millimeters, centimeters. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dumb American, so I'm going to... I'm just going to pick a number. So we want to say this. I want this to be 20 millimeters tall. So we're going to 20, and then we're going to say resize subtool, and we're going to say all. So that's going to resize. Um, three all the model needs unified person and scale continue. Yes. Cool. So now when we go down here and we go to geometry um, size, uh, well, this is going to be 0.3, which is not ideal. But then when we go to export, that's going to set my export size. So when we export, it should be scale accurate. And then you can go through here and you can hit W and then Y. And then if we measure from point to point, um, it should be 20 millimeters tall. So uh, that's how you can kind of set your scene scale. And so now you can use this to kind of dictate. Let's go ahead and hit Y out of here. Um, you know, how big your stuff is. And then also while you're in here, uh, so we got sliders to subtool size. Yeah, that should be right. Um, you can also go in here into the whole reason I brought this up was to go in here and you can do unit helpers. So if you want to do a unit helper of one cent, uh, one millimeter, you can do that. So you can say, give me a unit helper. And then we'll go into our sub tool here and we'll go into solo mode. And there's our little one millimeter. Um, you can also say, um, you know, we're centimeters, inches. If we want to do a um, unit helper, that's like, you know what? I want a unit helper that is, let's go ahead and turn off ratio so we can make this whatever we want. We can say, I want it uh, one inch by one inch by three inches, enter. And then I want to say, give me a unit helper in inches. There we go. So now when I go into 
transparency mode. You can see I've just made one inch by one inch by three inches. Slider just up to the side. That's one, one, one. One, one, three. Oh, sorry, don't hit one unit helper. Hit, that would give me a one inch unit helper. Uh, you want to do inches, um, new subtool. Then when you click a new subtool, now you're going to get a subtool that's one, and it's even labeled one inch by one inch by uh, three inches uh, helper. So you can use that as scale reference. So we'll go ahead and delete these out of here. Sorry, tangent, but we'll go through here and we'll start uh, modeling our creature here. So we've got a little belly over here. So if I want to continue uh, using this belly, I can hold down control and I can go through here and you can snap this belly to different um, angles if you wanted to like drag this belly along a curve or repeat this belly along a curve. So if you go out of edit mode here, we can demo that real quick. And we go into plane 3D, edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And we want to go control shift and slice curve. We want to like just pass uh, an object through here. And then any brush, for example, reverse scorpion brush with our belly selected, uh, can be turned into a curve brush. We go in here to stroke and we say curve. I'm going to hold down shift and open all these up. And we can go in here and say, I want to frame my polygroup border. And I also want to turn on curve mode for this brush. So I can go through here and just tap on here. And then now we'll have uh, a bunch of bellies kind of placed like so. And then if I want to scooch those together a little bit more, I want to embed them a little bit more as well. I can always go down here to um, brush. Yoink. See how fast that is now? I love it. Um, depth, I can go in here and I can embed it down and then I can just tap to update. And then if I want, again, want to scrunch these together, we can go in here to curve step and kind of mush those together here. So now we have, you can go through here and make your brush size bigger or smaller if you want more or less stacked. And then you can manipulate more of them. And if you ever get into the point where you're like manipulating them and it's not quite, it gets pointer or something like this, you can always hit six and that'll run a smooth. Uh, that's a bit much, that curve smoothness, you can drop that down if you don't want it to smooth that much. And, oh, okay, so you can also go through here, you can add to this. And then you can also go in here to like liquid and you can be like, ah, I didn't want it that long. Do, 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 do. Or you want it longer. Or you want this side longer. Oops. Um, or maybe not. Or, you know, I want it to taper. So I'm going to go down here to intensity and let's turn on intensity and size and we'll go bigger to smaller ish. And then you can tap and then there you go. So now you got a little bit of creature stuff. And of course, you, again, you can control that. It doesn't have to be sliced through a plane, obviously, if you wanted to like put that around a helix, for example, if you wanted to coil a snake, you can go in here and you could say mm -hmm -hmm. helix, edit. Go down here to initialize before we make it a poly mesh. We'll say radius. Now let's click and drag that off there, and we'll go ahead and crank this up all the way. And um, or we can we could taper those ends slightly, I suppose. There we go. And if we like that, or you know, feel free to make this whatever you want. Now you can say make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to say group by normals, and Control Shift Tap uh, group by normals under your poly groups menu, and then delete hidden. And then we can go through here with your Z modeler brush, BZM, polygroup. Thank you. Polygroup, poly loop. And then say this one we want. And then tap Alt, Control Shift, tap this one, delete hidden, stroke, frame mesh, polygroups. And then um, go back to our brush here. Let's hope it doesn't crash because this might get a little hefty. Is this something you need to worry about? These are all decimated down, but they I still wanted to retain some detail. But if you're going to be repeating this thing, a lot, um, it's really going to, um, it could slow your machine down quite a bit. So something to consider. Anyway, back to our mesh here. Everybody good? Um, hey Kira, uh, what is your best approach for sculpting the inside of the mouth at the very beginning of the dynamish stage? So if you're gonna do that, I would go in here and I'm gonna go into brush, heads, M, and I would make sure for example, that you scope that mouth wide open uh, so you have access in there. Um, in fact, it might even behoove you, let me load up this tool here, you can see if I'm doing a lot of inside the mouth detail, let's go to CD, 
intro sample files. And let's go ahead and turn all this off. And we'll go ahead and turn this goo off. This can be done with Z-Spheres pretty easily. Um, here, here, turn it off. Um, you see, as I'm working, and actually, um, in my creature series, you can see the making of this, uh, but I have the inside and ups, upper, lower inside of the mouth, outside of the mouth, this little skin flap here is all separate, and then the tongue is separate. And just, if, especially if you're working in DynaMesh, which I tend to do, and then ZeriMesh after I've kind of got everything figured out, um, it's a lot easier to go through here and be like, okay, here's my head. And even this head is separate from the body, just along a natural seam line here, and these scales are separate, uh, drive down there separately. So I like working separately, it just allows me to have a little bit more control, and then just hollow this out. And then if you want it, so while you're sculpting, it's like, okay, I'm kind of sculpting this head, now I want to kind of start detailing the inside of this head. So what I might do at that point is go through here, and I might clone this off, or duplicate this off in this case, and then say, hold down control, let's turn on X symmetry here. I'm just going to grab, and if you want to be careful, if you have like a really thin head, hold down control, and then underneath brushes, go to auto masking, and turn on back face masking. Uh, if you use that all the time, or you can save it as part of your, if you go back to the beginning of the stream, you can save it as part of your default brushes as on load up with back face masking turned on. Uh, you can also just put it out here in your interface. So on my channel, um, ZBrush for Concepts and Ideation, watch that on YouTube, and that'll show you that setting, I think. Um, or, or it'll show you how to do a, a custom custom whatever. So we're going to go through here and oh, turn it on so you can actually have that work. And if you're not, if it's not on or you, you didn't get a very clean result, that's okay. We'll fix that. Now, so we'll go through here and we'll say give me, give me the inside mouth pieces here. And we're going to start building these up separately. I love working. I, I don't mind working all in one piece for like uh, just very, very quick concepting, but I very early in my process, I'll start splitting things off because I just like working uh, separately. And then you can always you can always merge things back together and dynamesh them together if you want to. It's not a big deal. Um, so here we're gonna say um, Control W, make this all one polygroup. We can isolate this. Let's also go down here to Geometry, Delete Lower, Delete Higher. So we're gonna say we're pretending we're working in dynamesh right now. So we've got this, and we want to. Um, it looks like I missed a little piece there. So we'll go out here, and we can actually say this one. Let's go ahead and say Auto Groups. And then now we have this piece here, and then Control Shift. Select Rectangle, we'll grab that little piece there. Good enough. So now I've duplicated this off, so I'm gonna say um, Delete Hidden. And then now we need to go through here and be like, well, how do I make thickness off of here? You can go through, you can Z-Remesh this, you can Q-Mesh, uh, you can Extract. Um, but in our case, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm going to do an upper and a lower like I did before. And we're going to do that with Slice. So I'm going to go through here and we're going to slice right through here. So we have two separate pieces and we're going to go ahead and say Split Hidden again. And on this one, we'll just, we'll, we'll keep it easy. I'm going to go ahead and keep this as a uh, DynaMesh. Now if you just DynaMesh now, it's going to close holes, um, which is fine. That's what we're going to end up doing anyway. But to give us a little bit more control, um, oh, I forgot to grab that piece. Here's another thing you can do. Um, I can do a fill. I can do a close hole, but well, I can do this. You can do close holes, isolate just these pieces, do an auto groups, and then you can grab this one. You can also go through here and close holes with your Z modeler brush, and then delete hidden. Control W. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to, and again we're just playing it fast and loose with our DynaMesh. We're going to go over here to uh, masking. We're going to mask our border edge, and then Control Tap to invert that mask and hit W. And that'll allow us just to go through here and we can kind of go through here and move and scale. Uh, you can also hold down control and drag out edge rings. Uh, it's not going to let us do a very good job. Well, you can go through here and you can move and scale uh, those border edges. Then when you control drag and or you say DynaMesh all this together, um, that'll go ahead and close the hole up at the top. And let's also make this a little bit further out. Again, so you say have a little bit more control. Now, the stuff up here, I can hold down Shift and go into Sculptures Pro, turn off back face masking so you can use it. And then we can very quickly go through here and kind of clean this up or any of these kind of scrunchy edges. Um, 
and then mirror, mirror and weld, X symmetry. And now we have this um, kind of inside of the mouth. I know that was a bit uh, much. X symmetry, there we go. And we'll turn off Sculpture Pro. As far as like kind of detailing that mouth out and probably now that I think about it, um, maybe doing a light in extraction would be okay. So if you have this, you can just go over here to Subtool Extract and you can extract a thickness off of that and then just Dynamesh that and that might've been, that might've been better. But anyway, start with a big open mouth if you want to use Dynamesh. The same thing with fingers. If you're gonna do fingers, uh, maybe split the hands off and work on it separately. So if I wanted to, um, and we just talked about that too with the, um, the arms we brought in, but same idea. You go through here. And we want to put little arms on here and then go ahead and um, split unmasked points because if I dynamesh this it's just gonna weld my fingers together so it's like you know what I'm temporarily I'm gonna work on these separately so I can go through here and work at an appropriate resolution for these hands and then once I get everything together and it's the resolution that I want to work at then I can feel safe to merge them down and dynamesh together and then now we get a much better result. Um, another thing I want to bring up is if you're working on your tarantula here, and let's go ahead and say adaptive skin, make adaptive skin. There we go, exometry. You're going to notice some of these. If we go in here to brush arm parts and we hit M, uh, they have holes in the back. So if we go back here, I'm trying to see if one, I have a simpler one, I guess this is simple. Um, so you have a hole in the back. So wherever you have a hole in the back, you can actually put that right onto a polygroup here. So if we were going through here, it was like, you know what, give me this piece. I want to put arms here. I'll say delete hidden. But these arms, I want them to be stuck right on here. So I'm going to take the select lasso and then, um, Invert that, hit Control W. I'm just trying to make a polygroup for that. And we're gonna grab these pieces here. I'm gonna do a quick auto groups. So I'm gonna grab these two polygroups, hit Control W. So I have a polygroup here and I have a brush with a hole in the back. So if I just click and drag on here, ZBrush is gonna look and say, oh, you have a hole in that. So you probably want to um, mesh fusion these together. And you would be like ZBrush, you're a genius. That's exactly what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go to L Sim so I can scale across that local symmetry here. And then if I control drag, control drag again, um, it will, or it should, uh, go ahead and uh, weld those together. But if it's getting confused, what we can do, let's do this, control shift, control shift A, split hidden. And then for my brush, I'm gonna make sure, it's been a while since I've actually done this. So let's say if we go to my brush here, M, hole in the back here. There we go. So uh, it'll go ahead and interpolate that geometry, of course, and you can stretch it out as far as you want to. Uh, like if it's not close, it'll go ahead and match it up. But of course you can move this um, a bit closer in here. And I'll go ahead and say like so. Control drag, control drag again. I'll go ahead and fuse those together. So it just makes that geometry um, so that way, if you already had good, nice, clean geometry and you wanted to add horns uh, with like zero mesh and stuff, you could actually go in here to geometry, free subdivision levels. So for example, let's go through here. We'll say we'll subdivide, subdivide, and we're like, okay, we're going through here and we're sculpting and we're having a good time. And then I realized, yeah, oh, you know what? I wish I had a horn coming out the back of this thing. So that would be a good candidate for free subdivision levels. It goes back to subdivision level one. We can temporarily go through here. And this time, let's do this. Let's hold down, um, go into Z modeler, grab this one here. Could do control shift X to expand. Uh, it didn't really work. Okay. I just want to grab, oh, yeah, we, can also, we can also do this. So we're going to go into Z modeler. And we hover over this, we can do poly loop, poly group here. And we can keep doing that. Uh, until we get to here, and then again, we're just going to do a quick auto groups, grab both of these. So now we have a 
a polygroup on the back here. We're going to go to B. Uh, you know what? We also have more brushes in here. They're not creature brushes, whoa, necessarily, um, but they are IMM, H I J K L, insert IMM, or, or yeah, dragon bones here. And these dragon bones, like the horn right here, has a hole in the back. So if I go through here and I just drag this horn out, control drag, control drag again, I'll go ahead and mesh fusion those together. Let me make that a little bit. Mesh fusion. So you're like, okay, I've got my arm, but oh, I was sculpting a lot of detail on that arm. No problem. You're still in free subdivision level. So any changes you've made, um, it'll go through and project that back to you. So now you have your subdivision levels back, and then you can go in here and start sculpting. Now you can do all of this manually um, if you wanted to just push those, put those together, and then Z remesh or take your low res and then snap it. A lot of different ways you could do that kind of stuff. But that's one way you can kind of work. Um, a little bit cleaner, I suppose. Cool. Uh, so okay, yeah, let's go back to our. Sorry, this is not this is not turning into a 10-minute sculpty thing, but that's okay. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to say Control and drag out. Now, as I'm dragging these out, I'm going to be scaling them a little bit, like scale them up just a little bit. And I can actually do this. Um, oops. W. Let's go to, I'm going to go out of X symmetry, go to unmash mesh center reset, and then hit X symmetry again. And then hit Q or W and then control drag out a copy. Control drag out a copy. And if I got these, um, I can also be a little bit lazier and I can say, you know what, let me just drag this one out. And I'm going to go ahead and say mirror in Y. And then go ahead and scale this whole thing up a little bit here and you know what let's do it again control drag this out and we'll do another mirror in Y and this can be like the start of our uh, base body here um, so if we like this we can go through here and you know what? let's make this a little bit better and if this is too much information or it's too busy or something you can dynamish this all together and start going in and pick and choosing um, what 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 you want uh, to have there. But I'm going to go back to my brush here, and we're going to say M, and we're going to stick with, uh, I guess we can put a back on here, I suppose. Oops, let's turn off. We don't need curve mode anymore. We were doing that demo earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stroke, curve mode off. And then we're back to just normal behavior. So we'll go ahead and put a back on here, and then I'm going to go into um, brush. Let's keep that one selected. Like I said before, um, we got head full. We got pieces of the head. We have just the mouth we wanted to drag on. Uh, just the mouth, we can do that. I will go ahead and take this head here. And then uh, for legs here, we can go through here. I do have um, arm with scapula, so we can drag some arms onto the side here. And then uh, if I wanted to do uh, kind of more of a spider type thing, and again, you can use your Z zoo as a kind of a basis point for this. I mean, hold down control, drag out a copy. And then W control, drag out a copy. And then back in here, we're gonna go through here. Oops. And um, we got a tooth. We got a claw. I need an arm. So let's hit, um, let's go to our brush here. Let's go to our arms. There's my arm with scapula. It might be under miscellaneous. Or brush. I did have a spider one. Hmm. That's a cool one. So we can go through here. And if you drag out and you drag back in, that'll give you a, a longer, thinner one. And you can also go through here and you can scale non-uniformly if you'd like. Control drag this one out. Control drag this one out. And then we'll go back to our brush here, M, 
and we'll go ahead and grab claw. And you know what, let's make that thinner as well. Maybe not that long. And if I want to go ahead and see, like, hey, I want these all to touch the floor, you can go ahead here and turn on your floor, and then you can make sure that we can also scale uniformly. Make sure you have LSIM turned on. So if you are going to scale uniformly, um, you're able to do that. And then also I can rotate this. Oops. So you can kind of rotate that back a little bit. And then uh, for the tail here, let's go ahead and isolate. We can go ahead and split this up. It's actually split up pretty decently. You're going to see all the polygroups down the middle are the same. The head is the same. The arms are the same. If you wanted to do it manually, you could go through here. Yeah, let's turn off our floor here. You could go and say, you know what, I'm going to grab all these arms. So you could hold down Control Shift and you could just say Select Rectangle and you go grab these ones here and split them off. Or sometimes it's easier, especially if you've got a bunch of little pieces, Control Shift A and then Split Hidden. And then you got your legs here, and then you can do front, back. Let's do this. Now, on this one, if we were to go through here and do split by poly groups, so split, a uh, group split, um, each one, this would actually work fine. So we can go in here and say group split, and it's only going to put it into three parts, the body, uh, the back, and the head that we did, just the three. Um, however, this one, if we did split to similar parts, or split, well, split similar parts, wouldn't work because they're all similar. Um, but if you did split the parts, everything that's not vert welded would be split off. So in this case, um, probably not the best example. So we can go through here, we can grab these pieces. And we're going to go here and we're going to scale this down here. In fact, let's do this. Let's go into taper. I'm going to set this here. And I, I'm not sure if this will work. Let's see if this will work. Oops. Turn off X symmetry. Yeah, that'll work. So you can keep these all together. So we can go through here and we can kind of taper this. And also you can go in here and you can do like bend arc or bend curve um, if you wanted to kind of bend these around a little bit more. And then also now the tail I don't think is in the brush pack. So this you'll have to make on your own. And we'll go ahead and say flip. So mirror in the Z direction. Goes way over there. That's okay. Go ahead and push this on back here. There we go. So let's say uh, this is a creature I want to go through and render. So we can go say, you know what? Um, save as. And we're going to throw this into our streaming speed creatures. Yeah, speed creature 01. So we want to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of rendering and Photoshop work. Now, um, you can just kind of keep it static if you wanted to do just like, I don't know, approval turnarounds or something like that. But probably what you're going to want to do is go through here and say, uh, pose this guy out. So you can go through here and you can like do move multiple. You can split all these off into their separate sub tools. Um, if you Z remesh them and projected them, you can also use like Z sphere um, posing or um, what's it called? Z plugin. Come on, come on, come on. Z plugin. Um, Transpose Master, you can use that. Uh, in this case, I mean, I guess I could use Transpose Master because it's just going to merge everything together. But you could also just go in here because it's fairly simple. You can go through here and you just do like a merge visible. And then that'll put that on and into its own uh, merged subtool state. Uh, make sure you have X symmetry turned on. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this little star out of here. Um, actually, you know what? We can just use this as our working file as well. So I want to take this star to the top, turn it off, and then uh, we start posing this thing out. Now, in order to make it a little bit easier to pose quickly, what I can do is I can go through here, I can do an auto groups, and then I can do a mirror and weld. 
Now, if you have a ton of different tools in here, we'll turn off line, uh, that may not work that great. Uh, but in this instance, I think it'll work fine. So we're going to go through here. We're going to hit W. We have X symmetry turned off. So now I can go through here. and I'm going to start with the middle. So I'm going to say I'm going to grab all these pieces here. W. I'm just masking and unmasking. I'm going to kind of rotate this around. And then we can say, you know what? Let me grab this piece here and here. Mask that out. Move it up here. rotate this around and then uh, we'll take this head here and this back it's kind of bugging me and you probably want to save a version of this where it's just um, the uh, unposed version. So you can always go back and make changes based on that. And then we can go through here and we can say, you can go actually go to unmatch my center. We can kind of rotate this around. Or maybe have it looking down a little bit. And then maybe this arm, this will be good for, um... now if you control tap here, uh, because we did mirror and weld, these are going to be part of the same subtool here, so it's not going to be all that useful. Uh, you can at this point just do an auto groups, and now they're all separate. So now you can go through here and you can say, um, Control tap this one here. Um, or in my instance, I'm probably just going to grab all these. Control shift A, Control tap, Control tap again, and then go ahead and uh, rotate this around here and maybe raise it up. And then, um, you know, I can also. Let's do this. I'm going to isolate this, hit W, control tap this one, and we're going to we're going to do a pretty substantial raise up here. And in fact, I'm going to I'm going to clean that up in a second. And then we can just grab these ones. W and kind of here and then this last one, control tap, set that pivot here. And you can use transpose for this as well. It's not like you have to use the gizmo. And we'll go ahead and turn our floor so you make sure that this thing is indeed resting on the floor here. And I'm going to scoot here. I'm going to move these legs back too. Or right, scoot these legs around. say on this side. W. Control tap. And this is where setting your pivot direction is probably a good thing. So don't be like me. Actually go through here and hit W and then set your pivot where it needs to be and take the time to go, okay, down the bone there and then you'll have a much easier time if you need to. There we go. And then now that you're down the bone, you can just scale that out a little bit. So let's say this is gonna be our creature here and he's doing all sorts of creaturey stuff and uh, this will work. So now let's go into I'll do, we'll do a save. And we'll say P creature 001 posed. So now uh, you, could, you could definitely render it out of here if you want to go through and, and make, make sure your floor is turned on. If you want to capture that shadow, turn on perspective. If you want to get that, if you want to kind of over crank that perspective a little bit, you can go through here and change your focal length. And then um, if you just hit VPR render, to go through and render. You can change the S picks. Um, S picks of three is nice for a final render, just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to drop that down to one, just make it go a little faster because we're going to go into our render settings here. And we're going to go ahead and do an AO pass and a shadow pass. By default, underneath render properties, shadows is already um, turned on, but AO isn't. So go and turn AO on. 
And then down here, um, shadow strength, I'll turn that down a little bit. And then over here on the AO, global strength is fine. I'm going to turn that blur way down on that AO. I like a nice crispy blur, or a nice crispy <laughs> AO. I'm going to also crank the resolution and the rays up. And then for the shadow here, I'm going to see if I do a BPR render. Um, you're going to see the shadow itself uh, is pretty crispy, um, which is fine. But we can also go through here and we can crank that angle up on the shadow. Uh, and that'll kind of, as it gets further away from an object, it'll start blurring out a little bit. Uh, but it's also going to get very, very banded. So that's not great. So we need to go in here and crank up our rays. So then we can hit BPR. And it's going to increase your render time. But if you're doing nice renders, you know, you want to make sure that you're, oh, um, you get some nice shadows. So here we here, here we go. And then over here in our render pass, you can go ahead and save all these out. Here's your composite, your shaded, your depth, your shadow, and all that good stuff. You can also uh, send this over the key shot. You can send over your, if you want to like, hmm, let's see if we can do this. Actually, it looks like we have a little stray piece in here. Delete. Um, let's say, you know what, we want to go ahead and do a render like here. And we're going to go in here to draw. Okay, it's, I don't know that I've ever actually done this, but we can go save current camera to list, store camera, ZBrush cam. And then now if we send this over to our render, external render a key shot, PR. We might be able to bounce back and forth between Keyshot and ZBrush and um, do, do some interesting compositing there. We'll give it a shot. Boom, free camera, ZBrush camera, perfect. And they should line up, fingers crossed. So we have our ZBrush camera here. I'm going to go ahead and lock it. And then here's our free camera if we just want to. I don't know why it does this. If I go into Edit Preferences and I go to Hotkeys and I say, OK, give me it was already on Maya, but I say, give me Maya. Now I can use Maya. I don't know. Um, just while we're streaming, I'll drop this down to like 88. Uh, so we can go through here and we can start. Now this one, um, I'm going to go ahead in here and we're going to say material. It's all one material here because uh, it's all one object. And uh, that's fine. If you wanted to bring this over as separate objects, in fact, before we do that, um, OK, we have that camera saved. So I can go through here, and we have these eyeballs, but I want them to be a separate material. So just really quickly, I'm going to grab a sphere and just kind of pop in. And if you want to do the like the legs and the mouth, all those different, you could just split them off into their own subtool. I'm going to do a quick split mass points here, and then control drag out a copy, and I'm going to do a quick mirror in the X, unmash my center, bear with me. Oh, and while we're doing this, uh, not that it's hurting us any, but if you if it's bogging down your machine, just go into the key shot and hit pause. Free up some resources. And then W, control drag up. We're going to go to unmash mesh center. We're going to scale these down. Mask this one, unmesh mesh center. That'll work. Uh, for this one, I'm going to hit D for dynamic, and we'll go ahead and um, just turn dynamic on. And when it sends it over to Keyshot, it'll uh, make it a little bit smoother. Of course, you can also smooth the normals in Keyshot, it's not a big deal. And now let's go over here to draw. Again, I don't use this a whole bunch, so I'm going to try to. See brush cam, good. Send it back on over. Oops. Unpause. See brush cam, and then uh, render. I'm gonna turn off key shot, turn it back on. Whenever it's paused, sometimes I have to do that. So now our ZBrush model is two pieces. We have eyeballs and we have body. So for the body, I'm going to, if you go to the cloud library, I did a search for clay. 
And I really like this NR MUD, so I just went ahead and downloaded that. And now I can just drag this um, right into my body here, or over here into my stack here. And then for the eyeballs, let's go ahead into materials and we'll say black plastic hard shiny. And we'll go ahead and drag that right into our eyeballs here. And let's go ahead and go to our environment and we'll play around with um, some of these different lighting scenarios here. And for the environment proper, I'm going to go over here to color and we're going to drop this down to a darker gray. Okay. Uh, and then we can hold down. Oops. And of course our ZBrush camera is busted. Let's go discard this. So we have this one here. Draw. Might have been when I sent it back over. I might have done something weird. ZBrush cam. BPR. ZBrush camera. Lock. There we go. Sorry about that. And our scene here. Yep, so those are two models here. Material. Mud. There we go. And then, so we got this, so we got this. So we go to our environment and we'll play around with some lighting and go to our environment over here. And we're gonna say, we're gonna use a, just a color backdrop because I'm not gonna plan, I'm not planning on putting a sub backplate or anything behind here. And then, What is it? I'm so used to painter controls. Um, go to environment here and rotation. Control, left click <laughs> is our rotation. So you can go through here and now we can rotate this environment and see if there's any um, lighting we kind of want to start with. Now, if you want to do some like kind of semi moody lighting, you can, um, you can use your lighting environment to kind of do some nice ambient lighting, but you can also go into, ah, hold on, edit, preferences, hotkeys, oops, Maya, yes, there we go. Um, you can do some basic lighting like this, and then you can go in here and you can say, let's drag, let's drop that brightness down. Cause again, we're just using this lighting for like some ambient lighting and maybe some reflection work. And then we can go in here and we can say create. So edit, add geometry, plane. And then it's gonna be able to be moved. And while you're moving it around, you can also go in here to material, area light, and just drag that on there. And for this area light, I'm gonna switch this over to watts. And we're gonna say just 200 for now. So we kind of go through and use this as supplementary lighting. And you can use um, all sorts of different lighting models in here. Boy, that's that is killer, 60 watt bulb. Oh, and then also we can go through here and you can turn on scale. So you can go ahead and scale this out here. Kind of fade that off just a bit. And if you don't want this visible to your camera, just double click it and say, um, not visible to camera. So you can still move it around. Um, it just won't be in the way of the camera once you go to start lighting this around. So you can add as many of these as you want. That'll work here. And I'll say, okay. And then we'll go back here to our camera and we have our ZBrush camera. So we got our ZBrush camera, we got our floor and we have our creature going. Uh, we can play around with a little bit of this creature if we want to. So we can double tap this and we can go into NPR mud and material graph. And in here, if you want to like, well, I like, I like this, but I want to change the colors a little bit. You can go in here. So here's the plastic being pumped in. You have your texture map and then your curvature. Uh, if you double click the curvature, you're going to see the negative zero and positive curvature are all different um, colors. So you can go through here and you can change this to the negative one to whatever you want. If you want to make that darker or brighter or whatever. And then the middle one, or you want to change that green to uh, something else. You can feel free to do that. Um, so you can say, okay, okay, okay. And then now we'll go over here. Oh, another thing too, is you can go into your GPU. Um, if you're gonna do a GPU render, you're gonna have to wait for it to kind of set up and then it'll go through and uh, do your render for you. I think this will work. 
Uh, um, let's see. Getting caught up here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Bertram. Uh, are there are big differences between Keyshot and Marmoset. Yeah, they're they're pretty fundamentally different. Um, but you can accomplish very you can accomplish a lot of the same stuff. So um, in fact, we could probably you could do you could do exactly this in Marmoset if you wanted to. Even with the native, you can just take you can take 20 million polygons into Marmoset and assign materials, and um, it's more of a real time renderer. Um, so yeah, uh, even glass now you can do in Marmoset. So. That would be one of the ones earlier. You probably have actually, I don't know. It, it kind of depends on what you want to use, but you can use them both. Um, and then, yeah, actually, yeah, so you can use Keyshot as CPU uh, or GPU, so you can have this GPU. If GPUs, um, you know, there's there's give and take to CPU and GPU, so if I go here, Control Shift Escape. Um, so here under Performance, you're going to see uh, I have the AMD Ryzen Thunderbird 3970X. If you want more information on that, go to my YouTube channel. And you'll see uh, where's my it's one of my playlists videos. Um, there should be a workstation video. Here's all the new stuff that's coming soon. Coming soon. I got some tag tag work to do and an intro video to make, but we're we're getting there. And then uh, oh, over here, hardware full playlist. And then you guys can check out this update here. And I talk a little bit about all that stuff. Um, so there's that. And then uh, over in the GPU, we're using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And if you want to see, occasionally you'll see it working and uh, not really see where it's really hitting you, uh, changing this to CUDA, uh, you're going to see now we're at 100%. So that's really what's uh, using a bunch of your uh, GPU resources right now, uh, which overall the CUDA cores, I guess, are only making up at about 22% of your GPU. But um, those are the cores that are kind of chugging along. So, uh, yeah, so now we can go through here. Let me go to my camera, free camera. So here's the GPU render. Boop, boop, boop. And then here we turn off GPU, and now we're on the CPU camera. Now, of course, I'm only using 88% of my CPU. So you're going to see it's not going to max out at 100% just while we're streaming and stuff. Um, but, eh, I mean, in this particular instance, uh, it's, it's pretty fast. So we've got this here, and we've got our creature, and we're ready to go and start making it look a little bit better than this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to Render. And uh, 1920 by 1080, actually, what I'm going to keep this the same as this one. Document is uh, 1250 by 953. That, that'll work. I'll say 1250. by 953, and then we're going to render. You can do render passes if you want to. Um, I'm just going to hit render. Wait for it. Doop, 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 doop. Yay. So now let's open up. We're going to go between Keyshot and ZBrush. So we're going to pause this. Go into Photoshop. And we'll load it up. Load it up, load it up. Go in here, go into my renderings. Untitled 7. So here we go. And uh, let's go ahead and just right below here, say fill this with a nice sooty gray. And I can go ahead and match this a little bit, I suppose. Okay, and then. Um, Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll stay in here for a little bit. Oh, actually, no. One thing I did want to do in here, if I go out of pause, I want to do a little depth of field. So we're going to go into our camera here. We're going to turn on depth of field here. Or maybe you have to unlock it to turn on depth of field. Okay. And then, um, so our f-stop is set at whatever we want. So we can go ahead and we can drop that way down and then I'll really blur it out. And then we can say, um, set our focus distance. So the little button right here, set focal point, click it. And then be like, okay, I'm focused right on the middle of his head here. And then now, uh, as you change that f-stop, it's going to be blurrier the farther it gets away from that point. So we'll go ahead and I just want to kind of blur that tail out there a little bit. And actually, that's, yeah, we'll ignore that for now. So we'll go ahead and say this is good. We'll go ahead and lock that. And then, sorry, guys, let's do another quick render. Yay. And then back over here in 
Photoshop. And it's going to be quick and dirty, but that's okay because we're just getting approvals, right? So we're going to go in here and we're going to be putting another layer here. And then, so now we have this, uh, we can save this, we can have this in alpha. And also when we're doing our um, renders in here, we can also use this as a mask as well. So our shaded and our depth and our AO passes, we can actually, you know what, let's do that. Let's go over here. We have shadow, ambient occlusion. Um, let's go ahead and hit BPR. Oh, shoot. I don't want to hit BPR. I want to go in here to render, turn off key shot. And now I hit BPR. I want to give this a second. And actually, I think we're kind of done with Keyshot for now. So let's just go ahead and close that up. So oh, you probably wanted to save too. So once we have this, now we have our composite and our shaded and our depth. And what I'm really interested in is, um, you know, maybe this depth pass. So we'll go ahead and say, here's our depth. Here's our AO, it might be fun to play with. Here's our mask. Uh, if we were doing subset for scattering, uh, we could do that. That might be interesting to play with too. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn everything off except for subsurface scattering. We'll do another render. There we go. And then there's our SSS. Cool. Uh, another thing we can get out of here, if I want to do something shiny, let's go ahead and change it to um, that reflective map's a bit much. Maybe this reflective map. Yeah, that's not too bad. So we can try this. So let's go ahead and do, um, in this particular instance, I don't care too much about shadows or ambient occlusion or anything. So we're just gonna go in here and we're going to do a, uh, turn everything off except for uh, just doing a render. And that'll give us a little bit more of an alias, nice render here. And then our composite, we'll call this shiny01. And then also, Maybe we'll go in here to our basic material and we'll choose a black color and we'll go into our material settings and we'll go into modifiers and we'll say um, diffuse is fine. Uh, specular, we'll go ahead and crank that up and the specular curve will make this super shiny. And in fact, we can also move the light around if we want. Okay, BPR render. Composite. All right, so let's see if this will work. I haven't actually, I don't think I've ever actually done this, but we'll give it a shot. So now I'm gonna go here to file open and we'll grab our composite layers here, which is in our streaming. Speed creature, one here and here. So for example, if we have this AO map, we can go back in here and you could render out the AO map. We can say multiply. Look at that, matches up. And then you can go in here to hue saturation, um, link the AO map here, link the hue saturation the AO map, and we can go ahead and start labeling our stuff, I suppose. And also save often. So uh, with this AO, we can go through here and we can say, you know what, colorize that AO, and then, um, should be set to, oh, AO doesn't have to be linked, sorry. Uh, we just need to link the hue saturation to the AO. So now we can colorize the AO. And then we can say, um, what hue do I want that AO? And if we were going like, we can kind of use that as a little bit of a subservice thing too, because at the end of the day, um, if I'm going like alien y, um, nice ruddy. AO might be okay. And in fact, we can also drop a levels on here if we want to increase that contrast and it's already linked. So I can go through here and we can darken that AO and then lighten it. And then it'll really kind of push that AO just into those um, crevices there. And you can also change the blend mode here on the AO. So instead of multiply, maybe we want to do like a linear burn. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Divide. And 
and then we go in here to AO and we can say uh, just give me a um, map mask there and then we can go through here and we can say okay we're at 50 and 50 um, if you hold down alt and then drag up and drag down you can change the hardness and then left and right is the size and then I'm going to get rid of some of this AO in the mouth here just to kind of because I want a little more detail in there okay so that's one thing you can do and then also what do we else we have uh, black shiny we're going to put this over and we'll call this reflection 01 and this one we'll call screen so now this is basically just to make things shiny and if we know where we want shiny stuff to go all you got to do let's keep on to right click it like I'm in painter uh, go through here and make another uh, mask and then control invert and then now you can just brush it in why is Photoshop making that sound you can go through here and just brush in uh, where you want shiny stuff to be and also let's go ahead and go back to AO we've already used depth um, we can over crank we can actually do a lens blur in Photoshop so that might be interesting to use so we'll go ahead and throw this into our channel here paste that in there and then BPR mass that's always useful even though we already kind of have one And then SSS, um, I guess we can see how that will do for us. Not positive what. So then Alpha 3, and then Shiny. Here's another Shiny. So we can try these different Shinies out um, and see if we get anything out of that. So this one here, looks like I'm looking for maybe a soft light maybe and we'll add another here control inverse brush alright so now on top of all this, let's add a, an overlay. And I want to confine it to just the body here. So if I go down here and control click layer one, uh, it'll go ahead and mask it for us. But if you didn't have that, you can go into your channels that you had in uh, ZBrush and you can control click that mask uh, and it'll mask the exact same thing out. So we can hit control H if you want to hide that. And then as we're over here in our overlay, you can select uh, colors, let's say three and three. Oh, and change the blend mode over here to overlay. Now we can go through here and we can start making, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. A little bit different uh, stuff. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to get this mouth. Um, I'm just basically where, where the blood is going to pool. And you know, it, it can be green blooded, doesn't have to be red blooded, but I'm just kind of trying to message um, a particular vibe with this. So I'm going to go ahead and stick uh, with a really gross kind of red and even in the eyeballs here. Um, and in the crevices here. Oh man, keep wanting to use painter controls while I'm doing this. Uh, even maybe on the underside of this arm. Let's go to Shift 2 and 2. Uh, have um, pin pressure on. And we can go through here and I can kind of start making this a little bit ready. Now on the underside here, I can also go through here and maybe start doing maybe a little lighter, drier kind of color in here. And on the back side here, maybe we go to a crustier, darker green. And you can go crazy. You can, if you want to do tiger stripes, um, you can go through here and you can start putting in. It doesn't even have to be, um, I have it on overlay now, so it's going to be kind of um, sherbet colored, but. Um, basically for overlay what I'm trying to do is just a very like kind of like subtle uh, differences in skin tone or just overall um, tone and stuff like that so I'm just gonna drop this down here and I'm gonna try to add like some magentas and some blues in the eyes in the eye area here some greens just to kind of give it kind of a skin 
type flavor here. And if you have a, if you have any sort of reference or anything in particular you're trying to hit, like um, you can also go in here and you can grab textures if you want. Like uh, you can go grab a grasshopper texture and just kind of overlay that as well, or not even overlay. Just you can just take change the blending mode to whatever works uh, for that particular thing. And then you can also go in here to erase. Again, just trying to break up this uh, face a little bit here. And then like I was saying, possibly over here on the back, um, we could give this a little more praying mantis kind of feel maybe. So we'll just introduce a little more green. This kind of reminds me of, um, you guys know Carlos uh, Huente? He's got some, he, his, this kind of stuff. Uh, it's reminiscent of that. Not that it's it's nearly as good. He's amazing, but that uh, just kind of reminds me a little bit of that kind of feel. So it's going through here. And uh, what else can we do? Uh, also, we can try doing, uh, you can do blending modes for any all kinds of stuff. We'll go to color dodge here. We'll go ahead and name this dodge. And this we can kind of use as a way to add a little bit of uh, contrast through here and also kind of just punch in uh, any colors. Doesn't have to be that punchy, it kind of just depends on what you have selected. But this is another way you can kind of go through here and, oh, uh, subsurface scattering is another one too. So go in here to channels and we were talking about using the subsurface scattering. We can control tap subsurface scattering and then go back here, or we can stay in the channel, I suppose, hold down control alt uh, how are we going to do this? Because I want to select the white portions of the subsurface scattering, but I want to deselect everything around this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this mask off, and we're going to Control I to invert it. Oops. Uh, deselect, Control I to invert it. So I'm going to Control Alt. Yeah. So I think this will work. So I have my subsurface scattering. Control click this. Control Alt click that inverted version, and now it's just gonna be the subsurface scattering inside the body. That's basically what I'm looking for. So back here, we're gonna say SSS, and just to kind of see what it does, we're gonna go in here to like a, a kind of a ruddy red, and we're gonna say fill, and then we'll go ahead and change this blending mode, probably to like a color dodge. That's probably what we're looking for. And then there's our SSS, now that's a little bit much, um, that's okay. So it's basically what we can do is we can, uh, number one, we can drop that opacity down if you just want to kind of dial it in. But if you also want to go through here and change it to um, any color, let's go ahead and say we want to do like a hue saturation. Link that. Just hold down Alt and link these between. And then you can change this to whatever hue you want. If you want it to be kind of a violety or a bluey or kind of thing. Uh, but in this case, I think we'll just kind of stick with the red. But we can also hold down Control and tap, and then Control H, and you can paint in whatever you want. So you can go through here, and it's just to the mask of whatever you have. So three and three, brush here, and then blue. So you can go through here, and then your subsurface scattering. If you want to over crank it, you can also go into like, you just change your brush mode. So you can go through here, and you can do whatever you want with your subsurface scattering. So anyway, and then you can also crank up that intensity if you want to. Uh, you can also go and change the settings in your ZBrush to uh, compensate a little bit more too. Um, so okay, let's zoom in here. <laughs> uh, also, if you just want to paint on it, if you just want to put a new uh, normal layer on here, and you're going to say, you know what, I want to just go white, and I want to just kind of over crank um, some of these highlights. We'll go six and six. And then along here, brush, opacity. Oh, control D to go out of subsurface scattering mode, sorry. Uh, I forgot I hit it. Pop these highlights in the high a little bit, eye a little bit more. Uh, maybe down the mouth, we'll go through here and just kind of, again, just kind of over crank that wetness. You can 
can put little, little spit drops. Um, little spit drops hanging. Um, yeah, and then for the teeth, we'll go back to maybe overlay. And honestly, I think the teeth will be okay. Um, that's another thing too, if you wanted to change the teeth to be black, then that would be probably the normal layer. Um, drop your opacity down, you can go through and repaint the teeth black and then give them uh, like a shiny highlight or something like that. So anyway, have fun with it. Get in there, do some cool stuff. Uh, if you wanna paint like a little bit of bloom, maybe this will be, we'll do another normal layer. And we could say, um, let's say one and one, and we'll make this a very, very softer brush and sample this. And you just kind of go through here. Let's see where you get, might get a little bit bloomy where you want to kind of just dumb out some of that detail and bloom it a bit. And then also, okay, here's another thing too. So we can go through here and we'll make overall corrections. Uh, we can do it just on the body as well, uh, but let's go ahead and do a lens large. So I'm gonna do a Control A, Control Shift C, and then Control V right at the top of the stack here. And then if we go into channels, you're gonna see our, our depth pass is in alpha one. So we can go in here. We already have um, focal depth uh, built into our render. We did that through, um, key shot, but you can also go in here to filter, blur, lens blur. And as long as you load up that alpha 01, you can go through here and you can actually um, get, you know, continue to refine that. You can actually go through here and you can blur out everything, uh, but we'll go ahead and stick with that same point we had in key shot. And then we can go through and you can dial in. If you want a little bit more uh, lens blur, you can add that in Photoshop if you'd like. But I think, um, there we go. I guess I can't click and drag these. That's fine. Uh, another thing you can do is you can go in here and this, these are a little bit more destructive. We can go in here to the dodge and burn tool. And again, I'm going to just isolate it to just our body here and then control H. We're going to go in here. And so we have mid tones. So you can go through here and protect tones you probably want on. Um, you can go through here and you can, if you want to bring attention to some areas you really want to kind of push the dodge here and then also on burn if you want to go through and add some contrast to some areas burn there we go um, set it to mid-tone shadows highlights for burn I'll probably keep it set to shadows and then of course you still want um, protect so if you want to kind of dumb some of this down a little bit here All right, so we have this, and is there anything else we would want to do? <laughs> oh, I think that'll work. So let's go ahead and save it. And uh, there you go. Cool, catching up here. Uh, any good compositing tutorials, tutorials out there? Um, let me think. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any. However, another thing you can do in ZBrush is when you go over here to Z plugin, there is a ZBrush to Photoshop and you can use this. You can actually click, oh, you used to, I think you used to be able to click this and it would go to instructions on how this works. Um, but you can do send to Photoshop CC and it'll go through and render out a bunch of layers for you. Um, might make it a little bit easier for you to composite. We kind of did it the, the brute force manual way. Um, oh, Raf Grissetti and Liramel. Cool. Perfect. And so, yeah, so there we go. So now we have that. We got it saved. Let's go ahead and we got a key shot closed. And then, uh, oh, good. And we're only, uh, we're about done. Well, that was fun. So go check out, let me link, link this right here. The Creature Pack. You have 16 days left to get it if you want it. Uh, but again, like I mentioned, uh, all of the Profits are going to go to the CFA in uh, Australia for the firefighting stuff. So if you're down for it and you want to make some cool creatures, um, definitely check that out. And again, it's super easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and close out of Photoshop here.
um, super easy to use. And uh, like I said before, you can organize them so they can have like, I want all my reptile stuff or my goopy Pavlovich weirdo stuff uh, in one brush. And then, oh, you know what? I want to have a little bit more of a field day or maybe a little more happy accidents, in which case this is where I would probably leave it as is. And also you can have two versions of it if you want, um, or you can just leave it alone. So here's a creature stuff here. So like I said, um, armored predator here. If we go in here and we're like, and, and it, it, the only bad thing about keeping similar stuff together is you could end up just making the same creature over and over again. So I could just recreate the same creature I did when I made the brush, um, <laughs> which would be kind of dumb. Uh, so, you know, you just want to be careful of that. You know, you don't want to just recreate a, the same creature over and over again. You want to have some happy accidents, so. But just to kind of show you, like for example, and then the tail here, and then the tongue even. Yeah, so this is the kind of thing where, oh, hey, I just I made I made a creature that I already had. You know, that's not great. Um, so instead of doing that, you can maybe start with this and then start mixing them up. In which case, go and grab, um, and go go into the leg file here, and you just start grabbing some of these legs. And even if the details don't match, if you're just looking for like base meshes, don't worry about the details. Um, those can come along later. And for stuff with holes in them, uh, like I said, you can use your mesh fusion or temporarily you can just go ahead and like say split mass points here and actually, yeah, this can be more like a little dinosaur guy, a little Tyrannosaurus. And we'll go into the heads here. <laughs> Oh, there's so much cool stuff in here. Um, yeah, moose. There you go. And then if you just want to kind of play around with this, this is where I would go, okay, let's merge everything together. And if I'm just looking for base mesh ideas and not overly concerned about stuff, we can go through here, turn off blur, and then just uh, dynamesh this. Now it's going to be fairly high, so I like to do a deformation unify. And then there we go. So we can kind of Go through here and dynamesh everything together, and then go through here and just start sculpting. So we we'll go through here and align cursor to surface, and kind of start sculpting this stuff up. And you know what? We got to have a tail. So M brush. Let's go to. Is it miscellaneous maybe? And again, this is part of the thing too. Is just kind of organizing my brain um, so I know where things are is a big thing when you're doing stuff like. Little butt beak. Bam. And go my standard brush here. Crank up that lazy radius. Turn it off. And um, or you know what? Let's make this make this the eyeball. So if you wanted to make, uh, put some eyeball stuff in here. Go in here, brush, BI insert. I like to grab a little And you can even steal pieces from what you're currently working on. So we go hold the control shift. I'm gonna grab these ears. And we can say split hidden. And then we can just move these ears wherever we want them. Merge it down, control drag. There we go. Beautiful. Oh man. Can you just tell that this thing's gonna be great? I can. Go through here, I'll put in a little big old Gizzard. 
<laughs> go through and inflate. And then uh, right along the side here, put like a skin flap, kind of delineating these upper and bottoms here. And you can go through here and you can like sculpt out. Like, okay, I'm gonna dig in and then go dig out. And we'll get some heavy, thick skin here. And then, put some veins on the side. Those are always fun. Just when you thought it was gonna be a friendly creature, I put in the mean brows. Anyway, have fun with it. Have a good day. Thanks everybody for showing up. Thanks. And uh, God, I'll see you guys Tuesday morning, of February, early February. January, February the 4th and the 6th. So February the 4th, I'll be streaming on Pixelogic's channel and then the 6th I'll stream on my channel. And uh, hopefully I'll have some new stuff for you. Uh, updated videos and stuff. I'm, I got some videos in the in the queue, so we can get get through that a little bit. So anyway, cool. Thanks everybody, and uh, glad my audio is working much better than it was. <laughs> and uh, see you guys next time.